from Hollywood, California. I know you're going to dig this. It's the Tom Likas Show. Check this out. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like is 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. Uh, hey, Brooke. It's uh, it's me again, Brian. Uh, hi. Um, wasn't uh, sure if you got my last message or uh, any of the other ones. Um, a- anyway, I'll just leave a quick message because uh, you might be trying to call me right now, and I don't want to tie up the line. So I guess um, uh, I guess uh, yeah, give me a call. Um, uh, okay, I'm hanging up. In uh, three, two, one. Okay, call me back. I'll be here all day. And tonight. Okay, bye. Uh, hey, me again. I uh, thought I might have heard a voice when I was hanging up. Nope. I uh, guess not. Okay, I will talk to you soon. Hello? Nope. Sorry. Hey, babe. Just uh, trying you again. Listening to our guy, Coltrane. <laughs> you know? it's Okay. Uh, and, anyway, I got a fax uh, earlier about cheap airfare to Cancun. Uh, I didn't know if that was you trying to reach me. Um, uh, you know, let me give you my home number again, just in case you lost it. Voicemail uh, is full. Damn. Package for Brooke Roberts. Oh, that's me. Thanks. Uh, hey there, me again. Uh, your voicemail was full, so I got you this answering machine. So, uh, what's going on? I was thinking about, uh, doing something tonight. Uh, hey, you're home. Listen, Brian, I want you to leave me alone, or I am calling the cops. Look, I'm so in love with you. Oh! oh. oh. It's like us 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Like Us 101. And here we are with a new fall semester of Like Us 101, so it's time to review the basics. Somebody asked me about this in last week's class. Would you please review the basics of Like Us 101? Yes, I will. First of all, kids, this is not a classroom to teach you how to fix your teenage marriage or to fix things with your baby mama or to help you out with your burgeoning relationship. That's not what this class is about. So my recommendation to you is if you've got relationship problems, you know, send a note in to Dr. Phil or Dr. Turkey Neck or somebody like that and get the help of somebody uh, who, who gives a rat's ass. And I'm not even sure that they do. All right, but... Uh, this, this is a class to teach guys how to get laid. That's what this is about. How to get laid without responsibility. Something funny over there, Art? Now tell me what it is. Tell the whole class. If you're gonna be laughing back there, tell the whole class what is so funny. What, what is so funny? Our, uh, our executive producer, Gary Zabransky, gave me a look over the monitor. It was a, it was a nod of approval. And yeah. what, what was he approving? The uh, the turkey sound effect that I play. Oh, he was all in favor of that. Yes. Art okay. is supposed to play that every time you say the words turkey neck. Yes. He doesn't always. So right. I just uh, gave him the nod of approval. And- but it was only a slight nod with an eyes ra- uh, raised eyebrow. And looking just barely over my computer monitor here, it was a very funny sight when, so I, when I saw it. So Alexa Hente approved and the people are happy. There you go. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. 
Thank you. Uh, yes. Okay. So I am not here to teach you guys uh, how to fix your marriage or how to get your baby mama to stop blowing up your phone. That's not what we do here. Okay. I'm here to teach guys how to get laid with a minimum of effort, a minimum of money expended, a minimum of energy, a minimum of time wasted. That is what I'm here to teach in this classroom. If you're looking for something else, you need another classroom. Okay. Uh, we are here to teach you how to get laid. And the number one thing I teach in this classroom is that the purpose of dating is to get laid. Dating equals porking. That's the purpose of, 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 of going out on a date. If you have a date scheduled for this weekend, now that the summer is over, if you have a date scheduled for this weekend, cancel it unless you know that your aim is to get laid. Remember why they call it MySpace. MySpace is the space between her left thigh and her right thigh. When a woman says, I need some space, trust me. That's what she's talking about. She needs some space so someone else can occupy her space. Other than you. Bottom line. So uh, cancel that date. If, if it's not about getting laid, cancel it right now, you pussy. Cancel it. Cancel it. Seriously. The uh, Like is 101 students believes in the three strikes, you're out law. Three strikes and you're out. If a woman does not put out in the first three dates, it means there's no chemistry. She's not hot for you. She's not interested. The chemistry isn't there. Why waste your time? Why waste your money? Why waste your attention on somebody who's not going to put out? Uh, if you've dated somebody more than three times, stop now. Stop now. Like it's 101 students, don't spend more than $40 on a date. Zero is optimum. It doesn't matter how much you spend on a date. A woman decides before she goes on a date with you whether or not she's going to have sex with you. And you know what? If she's planning on having sex with you, she packs extra underwear. She packs some tampons. She's got an outfit to wear to work tomorrow so she doesn't have to wear the same thing to work. Believe me, women prepare for this stuff. If a woman doesn't have anything to wear tomorrow to work, buying her lobster tails is not going to make it any more likely that she's going to have sex with you. That's how women think. So you might as well spend as little as you can get away with. And just to clarify for people who are asking, the $40 doesn't include gasoline. Okay, We're not talking about the gasoline. You're going to have to pay to get where you're going anyway. Okay, It's what you spend after you get there. You understand. Like as 101 students, don't date single mothers. You've already made one mistake, Bristol Palin. You don't really need to be getting involved with somebody who has someone paying for their mistake because you'll be the next one paying for a mistake. Stop it! By the way, some other basics here. Like as 101 students, do not lend their sperm out for any purpose, okay? Our DNA material stays to ourselves. We do not give it away. We do not lend it. We do not help people get pregnant. We do not have sex without a condom and let that DNA out because every sperm that you eject is like ejecting a little blank check with your name printed at the top. That's what it is. Your genetic material is your own. Don't be sharing it with the world. Have sex, save it in a condom, and be sure to put a little Tabasco sauce in that condom when you're done if you don't flush the whole thing all together. Wouldn't you love to hear her trying to take that genetic material and stick it where it don't belong? With a little habanero sauce in there, you bet. A little Tabasco. That's a scream. Love it. Like as 101 students do not have sex at our own place if we can avoid it. Because we don't want any stalkers. You know, what happens if you date other chicks and they all meet at your place? They, you know, one, you're doing one and another one shows up. You don't want that happening. You just don't let them come to your place. If, if possible, you go to their place. And then when you're done doing her, you do not sit around and talk to her. No idle chit chat. No hugging. No spooning. No caressing. No staying overnight. Holding her all night long. Rid yourself of these instincts, please. 
You don't want to wake up in the morning and have her say, we never go anywhere. You never take me anywhere. Come on. Why don't we go to brunch? Why don't we go to a movie? Why don't we go hiking? Ever, oh, ever gotten that one, boys? Ever gotten that one? You were stupid enough to stay overnight, or worse yet, to have her stay at your place, and you wake up in the morning, and by the way, you were probably boozing the night before or something, and she says, why don't we go hiking? <laughs> Here in L.A., you get this one all the time. All right, have you ever gotten that one? Yes, you've gotten that one. <laughs> we go hiking. <laughs> Let's go to Runyon Canyon. Let's go hiking. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> there's only uh, there's only one or two mountains I want to climb. I've already been to the top. Come on, stop it with the hiking. Oh yeah, little nature, a little, a little nature tour. Come on, we we'll go hiking in Runyon Canyon. Come on. You can't let yourself get to that point. I've told the story many times, so I won't bore you with just the short form. I told you the story of the chick who got into the hot tub. She was a member of my old hot tub club. She got into the hot tub club. Those were the chicks who I had a list. These were all the chicks I knew. I could dial them up, and they would show up because I said, you know what, I've got a hot tub. And I knew they would come over if they were like not doing anything. And the hottest one was at the top of the list. You would just start working your way through the list until you finally got to the bottom of the acceptables. That means, you know, I got down to the eights. I didn't go below the eights. Because I was on the air with a big-time radio show at the time. I didn't have to go below the eights. But there were chicks I knew who'd throw on a raincoat or a trench coat and nothing underneath, and they would show up at my place. They would take the trench coat off, get right into the hot tub. It was fantastic. One night... I fed too much White Star to this chick who, uh, you know, said she was going to go to the little girl's room and she'd be right back. And so I, you know, took my time getting out of the hot tub and turning it off and putting the lid back on the hot tub. And by the time I got inside, she was not in the bathroom. She'd already been to the bathroom. And now she was in my bed, passed out, face down. And the next morning, that screechy voice, How can we never go anywhere? How come we never go to brunch? We should go to brunch. I hear the low Santa Monica has a great brunch. We should go to brunch. Jesus. Kill me now. She's the one I took to Amir's Falafel out there on uh, Ventura Boulevard. They've got great fluorescent lighting there. If your girl has a hangover and you want to get rid of her... Behind it. By the way, Amir makes the best falafel in L.A., the best. But if your girl's had a hangover and you're looking to get rid of her for the day, that's the perfect place to take her. Oh, my God, she was getting a headache just sitting in there. It was the best. I'm at a restaurant. What are we doing here? It's a restaurant. What do you want to eat? I'll, I'll order it for you. A falafel sandwich is two eighty five. Would you like a falafel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She was begging for mercy at the end. Why don't we ever go anywhere? Because you're a booty call. Hello, you remember the hot tub club? Why don't you have a go? Why don't we have a go anywhere? Because I don't want to be seen in public with you. <laughs> it, yeah, have some tabouli. That's right. And by the way, I might say. It's not that she was bad looking. This woman had world class knockers. It was, I couldn't be seen in public with a woman with that voice screeching after me. Are you kidding? My fair lady is going to be playing at the Pantages. We should go. I love musical theater. Do you like musical theater? I love it. Have you seen Rent? Oh, it's great. Oh, Jesus Christ. Unbelievable. So, boys, if you're not getting laid this weekend, just cancel the date. And do not be staying out all night. Just put your pants on when you're done and go home. Go home. That's what that's what ESPN was made for. That's what Fox Sportsnet was made for. You get home late at night, you pop open a cold one, you're watching poker. Or you're watching uh, ESPN Classic. You're watching the uh, Boston Celtics and the L.A. Lakers from 1970. That, that's what you're watching. You're not sitting at some chick's house. That was wonderful. I feel so close to you. We should go to a movie. <laughs> oh, my.
my God. And come on, I know I've got students out there right now, right now. They've been there. You've been there. I know you have. Don't let it happen. You don't stay over at her place. You don't let her at your place. And when you go to her place, you get the job done. You know, it's like when you bring the car into the gas station and you fill it full of unleaded, do you then, like, stay at the gas station all night long? Do you wake up in the morning with the pump in your car? <laughs> no. You take the pump out and it says, would you like a receipt? Yes, no, and you press the yes button and you get the hell out of there. By the way, what's the last button you press there uh, on the keypad after you put your zip code in? Enter, you see? You press the enter button, you start filling it with unleaded, and then you press the yes button, you get the hell out. Think of it like a gas station. Seriously. A gas station that doesn't sell lottery tickets. All right. It's like as 101. My job is to save you money, time, and energy that you will not waste on chicks who do not give you what you want, which is to get laid. That's my gig. If you want uh, pointers on how to do that, you can call me at 1-800-5800-TOM. And if you disagree with your professor or you're a woman who wants to know more about how men think, you can also call us here at 1-800-5800-866. Like is 101. The fall semester is in session. Tom Likas. I kind of hate uh, leaving messages or sending text messages. To me, text messaging is so impersonal. Well, I like it. Uh, I like things as impersonal as they can get. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding? I mean, these are chicks we're talking about here. Okay, uh, you're right. I bought it. Yeah. We're, we're, no, we're not looking for romance here. Oh. We're looking to do a little uh, little offshore drilling. You know what I'm talking about? It's Likas 101 on the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show, Likas 101. I am your professor, 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Adam on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Mr. Likas. Yes. It's a pleasure to talk to you, sir. Yes, thank you. I'm sure it is. My, my brother, Jason, out of the listener. Cool. Anyway, uh, just a little, uh, just wanted to make a, uh, a quick comment and a little uh, advice for your, uh, for your listeners, and I also wanted to just kind of challenge you on one quick point. Uh, just for, for the uh, for the boys out there. Hello, are you there? No, I left the room. No, I'm sorry. Did I'm you getting, need to say uh huh every three seconds? All right, here we go. Uh, I'm getting I'm getting crappy uh-huh. uh, signal. I hope as long as I hope. Uh huh. Anyway, just uh-huh. wanted to uh, mention to the boys out there. We, right. Uh, hello. Uh huh. See, you know, I'm still here because I'm saying, uh huh. There he goes. <laughs> hey, Tom, it's the first time I ever called. Yeah. Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Aaron on the Tom Likas show. Likas one hundred one. Hello, Thomas. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How, how you doing? doing? I have to say, I just moved here from Atlanta about six months ago. It's the first time I get the just the, the just to hear you every day driving home from work just educates me. I'm kind of in a predicament right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was married for eight years, uh, right. lucky enough not to have kids. Yeah. I'm 37. I um, moved out here. I was on the Internet, just humping everything that moved. Uh, the Internet's a great site. Plenty of fish, if you haven't heard of it. It's a- the Internet, that's a great site. It's www.internet. No, 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 plenty of fish. <laughs> plenty of fish. Is that the it's URL? A great, yeah. great site for the guys out there that want to play. Um, plenty of women out there with kids, though. Um, I try to stay away from that. But I, here's my situation: I met a woman who has two kids and don't live with her. Um, she can't have kids. 
She doesn't want kids. She doesn't want to get married again. I moved in with her uh, about two months ago, and I'm trying to figure out, you know, if if I'm following all your rules, I know I'm breaking the major one of moving in and having a girlfriend. But I just trying to figure out what I'm, what I'm, you know, I'm happy, but I'm. You wait, know, wait, 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 wait! Did you tell me she's a single mother? She is. Well, that's rule number one that you broke. <laughs> I know. What's so funny about that? No, well, they don't live with her, though. The kids don't live with her. Yeah, but that's not the point. Right. She's fertile. She Some can't other have kids. That's she what she told kids. you. Oh, she's fixed. She's How do you know? Fixed. Do you know that? No, you don't. Right. Well. You met her on the internet. You know right? nothing about this woman. Well, I know quite a bit. Why yeah. do you believe when a woman tells you she's fixed? What do I believe? Yeah, why do you believe that? Um, I take it for a word. I mean, oh, that's a good knows. idea. Yeah, women never lie about that stuff. Let me ask you now, and I already know the answer. Do you use a condom? Uh, no, I don't. There we go. How do you think she became a single mother? Yeah, yeah. She told the last guy I was fixed, or I'm allergic to latex, or I want to feel you. <laughs> You're right. You're right. And uh, now she's on Craigslist looking for victim number two. No, she's not. Oh, no, she's on plentyoffish.com looking for victim number two. Oh, she has a MySpace page. But Which she's not ever? <laughs> I know, I'm listening to you. I hear no, you but you're not, you're not going to hear me. Uh, you're not going to hear me until you're peeling off $100 bills. Right. Yeah, that's when you're going to hear me. You're going to say that you wished you had listened to me. Right, because you're not you. you're not going to follow me, and you're not going to listen to what I'm saying during this call, are you? Yeah, I am. Well, I'm telling you to get out now. Okay. Now. All right. But you won't, will you? Might. Won't. I might. I might just consider that. What do you mean you might just consider? Don't be cute with me. Oh, I'm not. What do you mean <laughs> you might just consider it? Oh, and there's a lot of... Be a man. Know. Say no. I'm not going to... At least tell me you're not going to do... You're not going to break up with her. Tell me. Not at this point, I'm not. No. That's my point. I just might do... That was a lie. It was a lie. I'm not stupid, you know. I wasn't born yesterday. I hear you. I just might do that. Well, I thought I was doing good at 37 with no kids. So, you know... Um... You have no kids so far. Right. Now watch this medical miracle that's going to happen after you have sex with her long enough without using a... Oh, my God, if the doctor said it couldn't happen. Uh, are you aware of how often people call this show and tell me that? Quite often, I bet. Uh, how long have you been a student here? Uh, six months. And you have you ever heard that call on this program? Oh, I've heard a bunch of dumb guys say, hey, you know, I just didn't feel like using it. Because have you, uh, so you've never heard a guy call up and say the woman said she couldn't get pregnant, and lo and behold, medical history was made. Yeah, I guess I've heard that a couple times. Why? But it couldn't happen to you, could it? Uh, you're right. You're right. But even though it could happen to you, you're not going to do anything about it, are you? Until it happens. You're right. Then, right. then you'll call me and ask me how you get out of it. And you know what I'm going to say? Screw you. I'm not helping you. I'm helping you now, okay? Now. Good. Food for thought, Tom. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know what? <laughs> Food for thought is just BS on your part. And you called in here and you wanted me to put the rubber stamp on your little relationship. That's what you wanted. You wanted me to say, Aaron, I know I recommend not dating single mothers, but because her kids don't live with her, and because this sounds like true love and a perfect relationship, and because you've done so well getting into 37 without impregnating anybody, I sign off on this. I approve. Let me put my stamp of approval on this. That's what you were hoping for, Aaron. You didn't call in here for advice. You called in here to get a rubber stamp. Right? Aaron? Yeah. There's your answer, folks. 
Aaron's out there right now, hiding like a little boy. We still have the phone uh, going. The line is there. The guy is still there, and he won't talk to me. He can't talk to me because he's a little pussy. Aaron, you're still on the air, and you're making a fool of yourself because we know you're listening. You see, there'd be a dial tone by now if you had hung up, but you haven't. So you are proving out to be the coward and the pussy we knew you were. And by the way, we know what's going to happen. You're going to knock her up and she's going to go, I have no idea. The doctor told me it was impossible. And then you're going to call back for advice. What do I do now, John? What do I do? I know you said and I know I thought I knew better than you did. I know. <laughs> Aren't you embarrassed? Why don't you hang up the phone at least? Aren't you embarrassed knowing that we know you're still out there? Aaron, calling for the 10 freeway. We know it's you. We know you're still on the phone. Yeah. Pussy. Just a little mama's boy, a little pussy. Pussy. There we go. All right. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Brianna on the Tom Likas show. Likas 101. Hello. Hi. Um, okay. I'm in a situation which is pretty much reverse of what you talk about. I'm with a man who has a child, and I just wanted to know what your opinion was. Well, men can't get pregnant. If you insist on doing that, go right ahead. But you also will not get the priority that you would get. Uh, if you were with a guy who had no kids, plus you've got the baggage of the female uh, that produced that kid. Yeah, that's true. So, Thanks. if that's what you want... Uh, all right. Well, I just wanted to know what you say, and I'm glad I got to talk to you. How old is he, by the way? Hello? Hello? How old is your boyfriend? Eh, we'll never know. Oh, my God. Just past half past the hour on the Tom Likas Show, Likas 101. I am your professor. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Ron on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Mr. Tom. Yes. Good afternoon. It is. I uh, am a brand new enrollee. My tuition payment just cleared, and uh, thank you for being my professor. Excellent. About a couple of weeks now, been in uh, like a 101, and I just wanted to, I think I know the answer, but I'm going into it for the vasectomy, I think, pretty soon, and I wanted uh, the like its opinion on that. Um, do you know for sure you don't want kids ever? Absolutely. Great. Because I was going to say, if you want kids at some point... You know, freeze your sperm. Sure. But if you don't, I think it's a great idea. Uh, and, by, and, by the way, I would never tell any woman you've had the vasectomy. That was question number two. <laughs> never tell them. It's an okay stretch of the truth to say, you know, maybe someday down the road I'll want kids, right? Uh, yeah, it's always open for debate down the line. Sure. Sure. And I haven't done it so Tommy. far. I haven't done it so far, but anything's possible. Sure, sure. Uh, in, in the years of, uh, like, it's 101, no callers have uh, reported any negative uh, thing, uh, side effects, or have you, you haven't heard any horror stories, anything bad like that? No, because the thing is, as long as the chick never finds out, what what can happen? Yeah. Excellent. I, I like the, be the best is when they come to you and they tell you that they're pregnant and you're the father. <laughs> that is entertain. That's unparalleled entertainment. <laughs> That that'll be. I'll call back. Uh, I'll call back when that happens, and uh, that should be pretty entertaining. Oh, it will happen. <laughs> and and you're going to enjoy the hell out of that. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely, that I will. So put that uh, in the in your back pocket and prepare to whip that out at any time. Tom like is. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I just hate the fact that you're spewing forth your nonsense over the airways and that my son is addicted to you. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show comes to you from Hollywood, California. America's own Sodom and Gomorrah. Speaking to you from the belly of the beast, it is Professor Tom Likas of Likas 101 
up, 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hi to Anna on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. So, I'm pretty sure I uh, already told you my life story. Why would you assume that? Uh, well, I'm assuming because all the questions I was asked. Dean, uh, could you come in here a second, please? Let's get Dean in here. God, this is the worst one, man. Dean, Dean, have a one. seat. Have a seat. This is the worst one. Have a seat. Uh, Dean, what is her story, Anna? What is her story? She, she assumes you've told me her story, yeah. which of course you haven't. So it took her twenty-five seconds to say that. Come on in, tell us the story. Grand. Uh, well, Anna is twenty-three, and yeah. uh, she just uh, got a divorce. Uh huh. And uh, she didn't have any kids. Uh, she's thirty-four uh, D. Five eight and one hundred and thirty five pounds. Those stats are 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 pretty good. And yeah, pretty Latina. Good. She's a uh, top heavy. I like that. Yeah. And uh, she's now just getting into the uh, to the dating scene, and she's right. a little confused by the whole game thing. And I got the impression that she's ready to just bang around since she's not really been with anybody else but her but her husband. And who and she just got divorced. Did so. she express interest in radio talk show hosts? <laughs> That's why I put her right in. I, I I thought I was serving up a very nice pitch to you. It was perfect. And then she tells me that she told it all to you, and then she assumes you would have told it to me. Because <sighs> she didn't get the radio memo on how to be a caller into a talk radio show. She missed a missed the memo. Didn't you explain when you get on the air? You know, just uh, act like we never had this conversation. I don't. I don't really say that because they the, when they're directed towards you. Because you know what they say. Then they say, "I just talked to Dino and he told me not to say that we had this conversation." <laughs> <laughs> that 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 will happen. That's exactly what will happen. That will happen. So she so was that's perfect. All you, so this that's was all you heard. Perfect. This is right in your wheelhouse too. This stupid broad. It was perfectly served up, and she blew it in twenty five seconds. And I wish she had, but uh, <laughs> rim shot, <laughs> delayed rim shot. That's arrow. Thank you. All right, uh, Dean. Thank you for that. Thank you, sir. All right. And when you call in and tell me you had a conversation with Dino. When you were talking to the screener and you two were just having this great conversation, what do we need you for? We bring in the screener. You know, I'm t training an audience is like training puppies. We're not, I don't care if it's, you can't say the F word on the air or don't call in here and start talking about your conversation with the screener. You people have got to learn. That's <laughs> just the way it is. <sighs> It's like is 101. It's 1 800 5 800. Tom, this is Rain on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, right, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Hey, I've heard your uh, opinion on girlfriends and stuff like that, but uh, what is it again? Like, I got an 18 year old girlfriend. I'm 21. What do you mean, what is it again? About... Wait, wait. What do you mean, what is it again? You know what it is. Well, you say, like, that people are too young for girlfriends, right? right. Like, people like you. All right, so. She's wanting to move in, and we've only been together for three months. And I'm trying to think of the best way. That's to what eighteen-year-old girlfriends do. I know. So, so what happened? Already, what the happened? Is, I've already I, I, cheated I, I, on her. So obviously, but I don't you want cheated to move on her in. because you're too young to have a girlfriend. So I just need to have booty calls then. Of course. Why do you need a girlfriend? Because it's straight booty every weekend. But, but pal, don't you have any game? Yeah, but... Well, if you have game, use here. your game and have straight booty every weekend. True. I know you, you preach like being a jerk and stuff, but I always hear just be yourself, you know, and that seems to work pretty good also. But, yeah, oh, it's great. Know. You've got an 18-year-old girlfriend who wants to move into your place. It's working great. <laughs> What's next? She wants to have a baby? Uh, no, no, I don't want to have kids. No, no, I, I, I didn't say married. what you want. I said, what's next? She wants to have a baby? Yeah, of course. She talks about it. Oh, you know, of course it. she does. That's right. And by the way, do you use condoms? Yeah. 100% of the time? No. Right. I know you said So you know what's coming. You stuff. know what's coming. Rain Jr. We'll, we'll call him Drizzle. <laughs> All right, well, all right, man. I'll be truthful and honest with her, and you tell her no. And, uh, 
Use a condom and I'll be smart and use my no, head. No, no, no. Get her. No, I'm telling you. The, this is the accidental pregnancy waiting to happen. You can't see it because you're only 21 years old. Do you understand? You're the kind of person this happens to. Yeah, I understand that. So you have to stop now before you make the mistake. If you haven't made it already. So should I keep her around? No. Oh. Okay. No girlfriends. Okay, why do you say that, though? That's, I just want to know the reason because behind Because you, at this time in your life, you should be focused on your career. You should be focused on college. If you're going to college, and if you haven't been going, you should be going. Okay. Now, are uh, you, man, uh, have you been attending college? Uh, no, just working full time, but I'm looking into uh, actually running the soundboard, man. That's really interesting. Stop, and look, stop looking into things and start doing them. Okay, I appreciate the advice, man. So, so what are you actually? Do, what are you actually doing for a living? Uh, warehouse manager. Yeah. See, uh, oh yeah, I'm working on a soundboard. Really? What do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a warehouse manager. It's the same thing all the time here in L.A. When a waitress comes over and says, "Hey, uh, how's it going? It's great. I'm an actress. Really? <laughs> you look like a waitress. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. I just do this to make money. Well, yeah, that's what that's what making a living is. Yeah. So you you're not doing a soundboard to make a living. That some uh, stoner friend of yours uh, lets you sit in and press a button once in a while. No, I haven't done a soundboard. I was interested in doing oh, it. You're interested in doing it. Well, I'm... yeah, like I listen to all you guys on uh, Live One Hundred Five Three, and uh, you oh, all yeah. live pretty and, uh, live, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Well, the point is, you only hear me and Russ Martin. Uh, do you do you hear the other people on the station? Do you hear? Uh, uh... Uh, no, I looked under like Art Webb is your sound guy, right? Yeah. Art. He was on Jackass, right? Art, how were you on Jackass? I didn't know about that. How how are we paying over there, Art? Uh, you getting paid well over there? I can hold my own. <laughs> yeah, but the idea is not to have to hold your own. The idea is to be able to afford someone else to hold it for you. Yeah, I'm doing all right. <laughs> And so were the Iranian hostages when the Ayatollah had the gun to their head and they were making those videos. He knows the boss is listening. Yeah. Oh, man, I appreciate your advice. Rain, Tom. it's called school. Look into it. Yeah, I don't want to be uh, manual labor the rest of my life. Well, but that, it, you already, it already has been most of your life. Now, yeah. I, I know you're enrolled at Bonham Young University, but you've got to transfer into a real college. Okay. You know what I'm talking well, man, about? I'm going to continue to listen to you every day because you're, uh, you definitely give good advice. And I tell all my friends and everybody who listen to you, man, you really do give good advice. Uh, understand, I don't want you to be parking in Levi Johnston's parking spot, okay, when he leaves the university. Okay. You know who that is? No, I don't know who that is. He's the guy who knocked up the uh, daughter of the vice presidential running mate of John McCain. <laughs> Uh, well, I ain't voting this year, so I mean, yeah, well, I'll, I'll look into it. I, 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 I think you're voting in a sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, can you take me out abortion style, man? Abo yes, I'll take you out abortion style because that's you. Better hope you're going to take somebody <laughs> out abortion style when well, this is all over. Miss a trick there. Don't miss anything under the molding. Thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's like is one oh one. I am your professor. This is Nick on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Um I just recently listened to your show today and I'm driving home. Usually I ride a motorcycle and I have been raised Catholic but no longer religious. But the morals of sleeping with I guess hot women and abandoning them and moving on. Is that just an L.A. thing? Because I'm not from here. Well, I I'm understand. From Tucson, Arizona. Well, I understand in the Catholic Church, uh, the, the only boning that goes on is uh, if you're a priest and you have a 13-year-old altar boy under your command. And other than that, sex is wrong. Isn't that, okay. what they, isn't that right? Uh, I, I would only say that 10%. <laughs> That's a pretty large percentage. <laughs> yeah. However, I'm recently married within the last month. Um to a great woman. She works at JPL. She's a planetary physicist. Um, we just bought a house together. And so both of us together are a team. And it sounds to me within the last half hour that you really don't promote a team. You play as an individual. 
Well, I know you're new to California from Arizona, but have you checked out the divorce laws here? No, I, there's no reason to. <laughs> not yet. I, mean, I get married in Boulder. And it doesn't matter dude, where it does not can marry anybody. Does Boulder, not matter right. where you got married. It matters where you get divorced. Okay. You so live. I, you live in in California. But you, things would have to go sour in order to have a divorce. And and one out of two marriages, things go sour. I can understand that. And in so Southern California, you, two out of three go sour. Sour or south or both. However, if you're looking at just relationships, both of our parents have been, you know, celibate with each other. They were born in another century. Hey, well, possibly, and by the way, I'm by the way, by you have century. no idea where your uh, where your father's been dipping the company pen. You have no idea. I've grown up with him and seen him every single day. It's you, my mom. I am telling you that if your father had an affair, he would not be telling you. I'm well, if your, what, I if your mother and parents, from what you they know around prior to marriage once they were married that was it they signed the documentation saying this is the, the I don't JJ care but, but I again I, but you don't know anything you don't know if they were faithful to each other or not and they wouldn't tell you I'm an only child and I talk to my parents daily out of that faith. doesn't tell I you have anything a very good relationship that with doesn't them. they I'm telling you this is the thing they wouldn't tell you the only way they would tell you is if they got a divorce. Yeah, that's not going to happen either. Oh, Jesus. Well, all right, Nick, you know more than I do. No, I don't. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, you do. You know more than me. You know more than me. I can't. If you'd like to say that, then I will. What can I say? You're the expert. You've been married how long now? Well, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Tom Likas Show.